Before we can start working on the PCG graph, we've got to do a little bit of setup here on the project. Let's go to plugins and just make sure these three plugins are enabled. You may need to restart the project. We're also going to need a height map and we're going to need a mask for the roads. So to get to the height map, there is a really wonderful website called manticorp.github.io unreal height map. And what it allows you to do is go to anywhere on the planet and download a height map from that little patch, right? So something that's, I think, yeah, helpful for giving a variety of, of uh, different terrain scenarios is try to find some little spot where you've got some mountains and a little flat spot. Once you've got a, an area that you're happy with, you want to make sure you've got the output width and height set to one of the default UE5 sizes. I like 2017 by 2017. If you're running a slightly less powerful video card, you might want to use one of these lower resolutions. It will change some of the values for the PCG graph. But anyway, once you've got your size here, you just click generate height map. You can see down here, this is the Grand Canyon, an experiment I was doing. And when you push this button, this is going to automatically download the height map directly to your downloads folder. I'll show you how to set that up in a second. For the road masks, we're going to go to another website, anvaca.github.io forward slash city dash roads. And this is really cool. You can type in the name of whatever city you want. This happens to be New York City. I don't know how broadly this road data is available, but certainly any of the big cities in the US or Europe I, I looked at worked just fine. So this is going to be all the roads in that city. And we want to change a couple things here. We want to go to the customize section. I'm going to make the roads white and the background. We want to make it gray, but not black. And there's a good reason for that, that I will explain a little bit later on. We don't need any labels from here. You want to download it as a vector SVG. So if you just push this button, it'll go ahead and download it there. Let's jump over to Photoshop. We'll go file open. And what you will see is this rasterize SVG format window, set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch so that we get a nice big image and hit okay. This will take a minute to load in probably. So what you can see here is we've got the image open and it is 16.7%, which means if I zoom in a lot, this is hundred percent. So this is nice. We get a nice clean resolution on our image. And just like with the height map, what we want is a section of the city that is 2017 by 2017. And we'll get there in a second. For now, I'm going to just select a square's worth of city. We'll resize it a little bit later. And then I'm just going to put some rulers around where that square is. So I know what I'm working with. If you don't see rulers, you can go to view and then uh, rulers. And then you just kind of drag them down from the top. Looks like I got a little snippet down there at the end. So what I'm trying to do now is I want to get rid of anything that isn't nice, clean road stuff. It's just not going to translate well. So this little section here with all this squiggly stuff, I'm going to try to find a nice road border. Don't need to keep our selection anymore. And I'm just going to kind of highlight around. And if you don't feel like doing this, I will make my existing road mask available. Something like that. And then we're just going to scoot this to some other section where we get some nice clean road stuff. Control C, Control V, and then V for the move tool. And I'll just scoot that into place. So I'm just going to go through and clean up. I don't mind this thicker road here. That's totally fine. I just want to get rid of all this. It's probably a lovely park or something. So again, just go to the uh, select tool, go find some nice clean streets. I think of these areas where all the streets are parallel or perpendicular to each other as neighborhoods. So I just kind of want to make sure I've got clean neighborhoods. Whoops. Let me go back to my base layer here. Control C, Control V, slide that into place. Uh, okay. That's probably good enough for now. We can always circle back if we want. I'll go back to my square and we'll just go ahead and select this. I'm going to hit control shift control C 
or you can just merge this down. Shift Control C will, will select all the layers and copy them. I'll make a new file, paste that in, and we'll just go to the image size here and make sure that it is set to 2017 by 2017. 300 dpi is fine. Okay, so this is this is great. This will work. This will work fine as as a road mask. Again, I'll make this available for anybody if you don't feel like going through this process. I just want to show you how to do it. Okay, back here in Unreal, I'm gonna make a new folder, and we'll make a new level. Make it a basic level. We can delete the default mesh in there. Let's go to landscape here in the selection menu. We will go to, uh, if, if it's set to create new as the option, select import from file. And then I've already got one plugged in here. Now there is something important. You want to set the scale to 100, 130. And there's some information about that on the website. Right here, it'll say, if you want to get accurate scaling in Unreal, you need to set the X and Y scales to 1533 and the Z scale to 410. And if you normalize this so that this is 100, this value turns, it's very close to 30. It's not exact, but you know we're not trying to replicate some perfect reality here, just a, a, an approximation, right? All right, so again, 100, 130, I'm gonna hit import. And you'll notice it automatically detects that it's gonna be 2017 by 2017. And here we go. You can hop over to selection mode, select your landscape, and then just confirm if for some reason the scale didn't work out, you can just update it here. Now, one of the things about this is it's not necessarily going to be set at zero in terms of where the flat spot is. So we can check that by just adding a shape. I'll add a sphere. I'm going to set the sphere to zero, zero, zero. And to make it super easy to find, I'm going to set the scale uh, to 100 X here. And you can see it's floating up way in space. So one of the things that we're going to want to do to make this process a bit easier is just move the landscape so that it, like, as we are trying to filter points for height, our flat spot is around zero. That'll make it much easier to figure this out. So in my case, it's we moved up almost 6,000 units. Depending on what landscape you pick, it'll be something different. Okay, we don't really need this anymore. I'm gonna delete it. You can always rebuild it if you want to. So I'm gonna add a blueprint of class actor. Call it BP PCG City. We're gonna to go to the PCG section here, create a PCG graph. A default empty graph here is fine. Call it PCG City. Let's go ahead and open up our blueprint. Drag it over. In the blueprint, we're going to go to the component section. We're going to add PCG graph. And then we can drag our PCG graph into the slot there. Hit compile and save. And then I'm going to drag the blueprint into the world. And for now, we can just set it at the origin. Let's open up our PCG graph. I'm going to right click in here and type in the word landscape. We're looking for get landscape data. For now, the defaults are fine. Pull off of here and type in the word surface and select surface sampler. And the only thing we need to modify for now is this unbounded checkbox. We turn it on. If I tap the D key, that will enable debug, which will show us the points on our landscape that we're generating. And here they all are. Now, some things that are important are the points per square meter. If I increase this to say one, we're gonna go ahead and take a moment to execute that PCG task. You can see we now have a whole lot more points and they're right up against each other. So if we were to make the points smaller, we would see a little bit of space in here. The point extends here. This is going to slow things down considerably. So for now, we'll be working with point one, and we might even reduce that further depending on how much time you feel like waiting around. One of the things that's kind of convenient here is if you tap the A key on our surface sampler, that's going to give us 
information on our attribute set data. I have a tutorial covering this topic. I'll be pointing to other tutorials as I go through this so I don't have to spend a, a huge amount of time uh, repeating myself. But this is the attribute set data. Each point contains this data so we can see things like its position, its rotation. Currently it's uh, aligning itself with the surface normal there, wherever it happens to live. And then let's see, we've also got density over here. This is a value between zero and one. And you can see that grayscale color here represents each point's individual density value. Okay, I think that's a good stopping point for this video. We will pick this up again in the next video.